In this video, we'll learn how to make slash commands for our Discord bot. By the end of this video, you will be able to register your own slash commands, reply to them, and additionally add options in them to spice up the game. Note if you're new on this channel or you have never made a Discord bot with JavaScript, you should watch my beginner's video by clicking the link in the description. Also if you're watching this after a while you should check the pinned comments just in case something gets changed. Now let's start the video. In the classic prefix command days, bots only had to detect your message and reply to it, and you got yourself a bot command. But with slash commands it is quite different. They have to be registered first then the user chooses the command, and then the bot answers this command request, which is more commonly known as interaction. First we are gonna learn how to register a slash command. Here, I'm on my bot project with the most basic code. You may notice that I've made a few changes with the intents and completely removed the message event. That's because they are mostly required when you want message commands. One cool thing is that you can register slash commands without even making the bot online at all. To do that, first create a new file with any name you like. You can name it anything but make sure to end it with .js. Here, we required the necessary variables that we will be using in our code. Also, this type of syntax is a shortcut for these syntaxes. Now let's continue. In the third line, you need to put your bot's Discord ID, similarly server ID in the fourth one, and your bot token in the fifth. We'll need these three pieces of information to register slash commands to our server. Here's how to get them. Make sure you have Discord developers mode on. Then you can copy your bot ID by right clicking on its profile and selecting copy user ID. Similarly right click on your server icon and then click on copy server ID. And to get the bot token, you can go to the developer portal website. But do not put your token directly here. This is because of Replit having all projects open to public. If you've watched my previous video, you'd know I can just use process.env.token, because I have my token in the security tab. Either way, you can do this, or if you're working locally like in Visual Studio Code, you can paste your token directly here. You can think of REST as a tool that can do things on Discord with your bot without making it online. This will be the function that will register the slash commands. Roots here is just generating this boring text for us called an endpoint. As you can see this function here takes bot and server ID and makes this endpoint with them. REST.PUT here takes two arguments, the endpoint which tells the bot where it should register the slash commands, and then the body, which has the information about the slash commands. Name and description are necessary to make a slash command. It will throw an error if either of them is not present. If there is a problem while registering the slash command, it will be reported by the try and catch block. A sync will ensure that our try and catch block works correctly. Then we run this function. Make sure you spelled application guild commands correctly, as this is where most people make the same mistake. Now let's try it. Go to shell and run. Node. Slash deploy.js. This part has to match your file name. Enter. As you can see it has registered the command. If it is not showing up check for errors in the shell and match your code. You can make more commands by separating their blocks by commas like this. Register it again. 
Moreover you can update a command's description. But changing its name will make it a new command. You can also make your slash commands global. Global commands are visible in every server your bot is in. Just remove guild from here and optionally remove server ID, since it is no longer needed. Register the commands. The commands will show up in an hour. But if you're testing you should stick to server commands. Now let's learn how to reply to them. Make sure you are back in index.js. This is the interaction create event. As the name suggests, this is where you receive the interactions made to your bot. This includes slash commands buttons and many more. This confirms that we are only receiving slash commands here. This is where you enter the command name. You can run the bot by clicking the run button or by running node index.js in shell. Before we progress, this is actually a shortcut way of sending messages. You should get used to this method instead. This will do the same thing, but using this way, you can send embeds buttons and many more things. You can also do this cool thing. This is an ephemeral message. It's like a secret message that is only sent by bots. The person who ran the command can only view it, but be careful as the message disappears after some minutes. Similarly, you can do more commands like this. There's more to interaction replying like deferring and follow up, but that's irrelevant to this video, so I'll make another video covering that topic. Now let's add more features to our slash commands. But before that, making advanced commands using this way will be hard, so we will be using a more popular way to register the commands. Make sure you're back in your slash register file. First include slash command builder here. And then clear this part. Now we are registering the slash command with slash command builder. If you run this, it will work the same. You can add more commands like this. Make sure you don't miss that comma. Next we'll add options in our slash command. Options are extra information provided to a slash command which can be used for making better commands. For example in a ban command, the member to ban is an option. A slash command can't have more than 25 options. There are 11 types of options including member option, channel option, string option and many more. Right now let's add string option in our command. This is the name of the option that will be visible in the option title column of the slash command. And this is the description that will appear when you are typing in the option. Deploy the commands and check it out. But it won't do anything right now. Let's put this text into use. Make sure you are back in index.js. You have to enter the option name here, which in our case is text. Now we have access to the text entered by the user. Now for example, you can use it like this.
but there is a problem. Since we can skip the option we'll run into a problem like this. We can dodge this problem by making the option required. Also the required option should always be above the not required options. Otherwise it will throw errors. We can also define how big or small the text should be. This function takes the lowest length of the text. You can enter any integer in it. Similarly, there's also the maximum function which limits the text length to the given number. And these two functions can be used together as well. As this video is getting longer I've decided to split it into two parts. In the next part we'll cover the rest of the options and make a slash command handler. It'll be linked in the description if it is uploaded. So until then, farewell.